Just getting set up, guys. Let's uh, make sure everybody gets in a few minutes early as usual. Volume off there for equities for a second. There we go. Hi Vic, how are you doing? Hey everybody. Everybody had a good week trading? I have, went to reset, went to bake basics, and had a green day every day. I'm happy. Three day weekend ahead. Crack on next week. Hi Edith, hi Norman. Okay, so today is Trilogy, so we're going to be looking at combining, and this is the last webinar for quite a while. I'm going to take some time off. Uh, I'm burnt out. Uh, it is the summer as well. My, I've got seven children, believe it or not, only two live at home and a grandson, so uh, now is the time when they start to visit and everything, and I need a break. Um, so uh, we won't be scheduling any more webinars on a Thursday. Hola, Federico, um, for a while. JW will still do, be doing the Wednesday uh, webinars, but I'm going to personally take a break uh, for a while. And uh, to recharge my batteries, spend some time with my uh, family because I've been steering the ship through COVID-19 and I need a bit of a break from, uh, from webinars and all that sort of thing. So um, just want to put that in there. Where is it? Let's break out and buy us together. Thank you, Federico. So, okay, so, right. We're going to do trilogy. So we're going to look at um, some trades and in, that I'm in. I've just closed out, for example, uh, and looking that and how uh, you know not necessarily all use all three for entries, uh, but you can uh, you know in this particular case, CTLT was a great trade. I've just traded this, um, you know, with the inner circle. It uh, entered um, you know a couple of weeks ago. CTLT uh, fourth wave on this stock on the 240 time frame, and uh, it went and it's hit the target. Tried to push through, just took out my trading stop um, yesterday, actually to take that profit. So, you know, there were instances where you had the short going into on the roller coaster to the wave four. We found great support in here started to move up sensible entry here very sensible entry very conservative risk reward still one to 1.6 into the target zone there but there were opportunities during this time to add to this trade but one thing i like as well is when you've got a stock that's heading up towards your entries and you keep getting these bit signals that means there's increasing volume to the upside, these green candles, and there's bit signals. So there's, there's breakout potentials there. So you've got to be confident when that's happening and going toward your entry on that fifth wave move. You've got to be pretty confident in that. You know, then we get some, some uh, bit signals while we're in it. You know, these are opportunities to maybe add to your uh, position. And then, um, you know, I then move that to a daily to manage. So if you look at this on the daily time frame. It was quite simple. Once we start to, uh, we get a red day here. So this is increased volume to the downside, okay? 
uh, which means potentially we've run out of juice. Remember, I, I'm trading the fifth wave on, um, on the 240, but on the daily, the daily time frame for stocks is the truest time frame. Okay, there's an open, a close, a high, and a low. So when we look at the volume for these days, these gray candles using the bits, each day the volume is lower and lower and lower until finally we get a high volume day, but it's a red day, a down day. That's a sign it's going to potentially turn back down. So you become very tight with your trading stock to lock at all of this profit. You know, you risk $10,000 on this trade. This is worth $17,000, uh, $17, sorry. So $10,000, $17,000, you're going to lock some profit in there. So again, it's not just about the entry. It's about trade management. Again, with the bits, we indicate to you how the volume's going. So when, when I talk about in these courses, we talk about the volume um, degrading every day. The volume is lower. So we get a big green candle there, which is increased volume to the upside. But then straight away, the next day is a little doji with less volume than this previous green day. And then the next day, although we have great price action, it's even lower volume than that day. And then the next day, we get a spinning top with even less volume. Then the next day, we gap up, reject the highs on high volume. We're learning the behavior just through the volume and that price action. And that's what the bits is good for uh, in some circumstances when you're, you know, you're in a fifth wave trade, but you're using that to help understand the behavior to manage the trade. Uh, what I'm still in right now is FNV, okay? So this is slightly different in that I had a great entry, okay? That's on the daily time frame. It's hit the fifth wave target and an all-time high today, okay? So now I also have the roller coaster giving me the trailing stock position. So I have a decision. I can be conservative, use the trailing stock provided by the roller coaster to manage this trade, uh, which you know will likely have a pullback because spinning top with high volume the next day, which was yesterday, we had um, an up day, but again, a doji with, with, with gray, which was less volume. Today, we've got another doji. And if it closes today like this with less volume than the day before, you got to think this could be turning back around. So you have to make that decision. Am I going to let this pull back? A lot of the time we come back and test this sort of zone where the wave three pivot is a support. Okay. So that previous resistance zone could be, in fact, uh, you know, this previous resistance could be support here, right? So at this moment in time, I have to decide whether to get out, take the big profit, go very, very tight and take 100% profit times risk, or stay conservative, follow this up, allow for a pullback and see if it finds support at that um that target zone there because you know we like these things to run but we always want to lock in some profit profits locked in now for me personally i'm not having a bad um a bad month uh, for july with the stocks actually with the swings so i'm going to see what happens when it comes to this sort of area if it's still on low volume coming down here dictated by the color of the candles using the bits so in this case i'm using the color of the candles uh, for the bits I'm using the roller coaster to manage the trade, but my entry strategy and the whole strategy to trade is the fifth wave move the Elliott wave. So I'm using all three in this instance, okay? Um, and it's working out extremely well. So when I go to something like, um, blah, 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 where are we? Another stock, MOH. Um, you know, this is going sideways, right? So I'm, the high volume days, I'm, I'm actually getting down days, high volume, I'm, just lately. So I'm getting these high volume up days, high volume down, one, two, three, four days, get higher support. Okay, we then have low volume up, high volume down, but a higher support. So this uptrend is respecting the channel quite well 
I really do need some volume to come in here, but I also have earnings coming up as well, okay? So this is a fifth wave move, but most likely it's not going to get there unless it has good earnings and the catalyst is good enough for that. Now with stocks, they gap quite a bit on earnings. If it gaps against you and you put a, a trading stop at risk free, you're most likely to gap down below that and take a bit of a loss. So the decision on this one is it's been in quite a long time and I'm going to be out before earnings. Okay. Uh, every trade is different. Believe me, every trade is really different. Um, another example is so, okay, T-H-O, okay. So this one really is, um, you know, we've gone for a fifth wave. I'm trailing it now two candles behind. Um, I have a great update here. We've got a new fifth wave high formed today. It's rejected those highs, but so far, low volume. If it closes like that today, I'm going to be adjusting, um, you know, up two candles behind. But be aware, if it's still low volume, it might just turn around tomorrow. Uh, but if it is high volume, I've got to be prepared. It might gap. So I've got to really keep an eye on that stop uh, pre-market. But I'm two candles behind at the moment on that stop in profit. Okay. Let's look at one more thing. Massey is the one. Yes, that's the one. Okay. So when you're trading a fifth wave move, mass is another one that we're in right now. Um, we are, we're in profit. We've had a nice high, couple of high volume days, took us 100% profit times risk. Now we're pulling back slightly, but again, cyan, cyan, cyan. This is lower volume each day on this pullback. This is some low volume profit taking. Okay. So in reality, it's just people skimming off the top, if you like. There's no real selling. It's just people taking some pop positions off, taking some of that. And it's not really forcing the trade down. However, now I am risk-free because as soon as I get a close above the 50% profit times risk, I like to go risk-free. But now, tomorrow, I'm now printing the first trading stock position for this roller coaster trade. So again, now... I'm going to be using the roller coaster to manage this trade. Okay. It seems a little aggressive, but it's locking in some profit. And I know these three down days, I mean, today's an inside day, but this pullback right now is low volume. So I'm reasonably confident this is going to run out of juice, find a higher support level, hopefully above where my trading stock will be after the close today and allow it to go. And then each day, all I do next time trading stop position is printed tomorrow is just adjust the stop. Okay, so in this case, I'm just using two. I use the uh, Elliott Wave to get in a trade. Uh, I've let that move forward. I've used, you know, basic um, trade management techniques to get it to risk free. Ah, can't grow old of it now. Uh, and then now the trading stop's been printed on the roller coaster. I'm going to combine that and use that for uh, my stocks. Very, very simple. Uh, and, you know, I do this every day. I think Matt is in here. Uh, Greg from Inner Circle. You know, these are real trades, guys. Okay. These are real trades. These are what we're in right now. Okay. Um, and it's, you don't need to overcomplicate it. You've got a trilogy of indicator suites that can help you understand the behavior, get into trades, manage trades, okay? Very, very, very simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't start putting ball in your bands and this and that and all the other things. All of a sudden you've got a chart you really don't understand, okay? So keeping it simple, using the three together in some uh, instances uh, will really, really help you um, get to grips with, um, you know, really good trade. So that stocks. Okay. 6E today we traded. Did we trade it? We had a runner. We had a runner, a big runner. Okay. Um, where do I start? <laughs> so um, I think this is the trade we took, wasn't it, Matt, on the 6E? Um, so we didn't take the short because I'm bullish by a 6E. Um, we came down, we got the roller coaster, and then boom, 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 right into 
uh, the big resistance zone. These are new highs for the last year. Six E's making right now. Dollar's very weak. Printing all this money just ain't good for the dollar right now. Um, so, and then obviously you got uh, the employment news today. Sent the dollar down a bit further and this pushed up. So very, very simple here. There was an opportunity to trade the fifth wave as well. So you can get early with a roller coaster, you get early in a trend. So you can trade this up. Uh, it goes into resistance. You expect to pull back at that stage. Then it pulls back on a wave four. Then you can trade the fifth wave. You know, an entry strategy here, this is the three minute. Okay. Once you've... Um, You've had one attempt to come down, you know, your six, four moving average is way up here. You're not going to go along just yet. Wait for it to come down. Higher support level than this wave four. This is looking bullish. Go along through this pivot. There you go. There's your fifth wave move. There's the target. So combining today on futures, uh, roller coaster and Elliott wave gets you in this really big move. I know we're talking big move here. We made some really good money on 6E today, um, just by doing the basics, okay? Let me just put that back. Okay, that's 6E. We only really traded 6E today. We didn't trade anything else. Once you get that winner, you go, you, you move away. So also, uh, I think Vic, you were, we were talking about Nadex the other day. Um, I've closed two uh, knockout uh, options this week at max profit for euro, US dollar, that move you've just seen there, and for gold. Uh, I'm still in this one on GBP, US dollar with a day and two hours left for expiry. It's in profit. You know, the, you know this is demo. I, you know, I'm just trialing this. Uh, but what I'm looking at is on a Monday and Tuesday, those uh, higher time frames. On, on the on the you know six B the British pound or six E Euro US dollar gold oil that sort of thing and I'm looking for way for pullbacks I'm looking at a reasonable price where I expect uh, those to hit by the end of the week Euro US dollar closed out this afternoon boom hit the target max profit a max profit was three hundred and fifty dollars on the one contract for a I don't know a forty dollar max risk. Okay, really, really good. Gold, I took 500 bucks on Wednesday. It reached the target, you know, halfway through the week. And I'm in profit on here. So on the demo, on this, trying this strategy uh, within the circle, you know, we, it's a, a thousand bucks we've made this week just on this trial. It's, it, it's good. Needs a little bit more work. Um, but I, I do think, and this is cheaper than futures. Uh, so I think there's some future with these uh, knockouts and call spreads. So... You know, I'm not saying uh, everybody should do this, uh, but, I, you know, I'm looking, when I look at oil, for example, here, um, let's, uh, let's go here. So I'm looking at oil, it's got a day expiration, um, but, you know, if, it, if I was at the beginning of the week and we were bullish and we got a good signal, oil here, if I want to buy one contract, uh, it's, you know, max um, loss is 157, so that's your risk. For a max profit of three hundred and forty-seven dollars, that's not a bad risk to reward, really. That's pretty good. Um, so you know, these are, I would say, not at the end of the week. If you went to the end of the week, you would have to go call spreads on the daily. Uh, so we would go an hour out here on oil, for example. Uh, but that's not too bad, actually. Yeah, look at that, fifty-seven dollars max loss. For a potential two hundred and forty-six dollars, is it going to close between forty-one fifty and forty-four fifty, and is it going to get a move on right now? I don't know. Not done, not done the analysis, but really, really, the risk is reduced on these, and this is what I like. Uh, if you do your analysis using these indicator suites, and you've got a good bullish or a bearish move here, and you choose the right contract with minimum risk with maximum reward and you get runners like you do with you did with the euro and the gold this week really now i to be honest Vic, i'm leaving the indexes alone on futures and on this if you want to if you want to trade uh, a proxy for s p for example 
trade copper. Okay. Um, I, I decided a few weeks ago, uh, I'm going to stop training the index as a too volatile. Um, I look at, I, this last week, all we've traded is copper, gold, 6E, 6B. That's it. Nothing else. S kept it simple. And it's been a green week. Um, because it, I'm trying to do too much. Uh, and then the index is really, really, uh, they can whip within a day and really uh, hurt. So I've just been sticking to those four. Uh, and HG is a really good correlation with S&P right now, less volatile, uh, and you can get some good trades with that. And you can trade it uh, on call spreads here as well. There's only 11 minutes left on this one right now. Um, so, you know, you probably wouldn't be trading this now, but like, you know, if you wanted to go along here, it's going to be a little bit, yeah. I mean, $88 risk for $518 uh, max profit here, but there's only 11 minutes to expiry. So you'd be doing this early on in the day. Uh, but yeah, really, really like it. It's a, it's a good product. Uh, I'm starting to get a bit more confidence with it. I'm just going to keep trialing it until the end of September, I think, uh, until I really, really understand um, how beneficial it is to my trading. Okay, guys, so this, uh, just as a warning, uh, this is the last webinar I will be doing for quite a while, definitely for the summer. I'm out for most, I'm out, I'm out for August. Uh, the only people I'm going to spend some time with is my family, the in circle. Uh, but even then, I'm, I'm taking a bit of a summer break. So, um, you know, I don't know when the um, webinars will be back. JW will be doing the Wednesday webinars. Uh, every week, just, just as normal, and he can answer your questions on the Elliott Wave, um, the bits, and the roller coaster. Uh, we can look at, he can look at combinations. He, he does a really great job there. I just think we're doubling up, and I, I need to um, spend some uh, time with my family and stop working until 7, 8 o'clock at night. Um, so uh, we, all of these have been recorded, remember. You can go back on the website and look at... Oof, there's, there's way over a hundred webinars. Okay. There's loads and loads of webinars and I answer all the questions. I give lots of examples and what Damien's going to do over the next month or so is take snippets from all of those videos and put and put them together as FAQs. So when people ask a question about certain thing, we've got probably four or five examples in all the videos to put them together. So if you've got a question, they can be answered because to be honest, a lot of the time in these webinars, I'm repeating the same thing and answering the same questions all the time. Oh, you're welcome, Damien. You're getting bored anyway. <laughs> okay, guys, so this is your time. Do you want to ask a question on trading the trilogy, how we combine? Is there something that's uh, not quite working for you? Um, you know, uh, whether it's on a specific indicator suite, or how to combine them, you know, just, just ask that now's the time. Okay. Speak now or forever hold your peace. I gave you some pretty cool examples there, but it's pretty basic stuff. And I've learned uh, over the last week or so, don't be, you know, it's difficult for me because I'm not trading on my own. I'm trading with the people. Uh, but going back to basics has really, really helped hone uh, and give me a little bit more confidence because it was waning a little bit. Um, with Not with stocks, uh, but, you know, with futures, I was being beat up a little bit and I had to go back to basics. Uh, and I go risk free pretty quick just recently. And some of them just take me out and go on a bit. That's fine. But the ones that don't take me out, like 60 today, that was a runner. Like gold yesterday, that was a runner. Uh, how can you prevent um, getting whipped on a, on a wave um, for? So, Right, so one of the things we look at is the rules for, uh, you know, looking for a, a potential fifth wave move. So 
one of the things if I bring the two men in over here, for example, because some of them are, you know, some of them look ugly, but there are the rules that we need to follow. So let me just go big on here. So the first thing, when we have a wave four pullback, it has to find support in our zone, in a, one of our green, amber, or red zones. Yeah. The better ones pull back against the pulse breakout here, cross over here. Then the 535 is between 90 and 140. So there, you know, that's the probability of the trade. And then it's the entry that is important here. Okay. Very, very important. Sometimes you've got to work out that risk to reward. And let's go to a stock because there's all this color in here and it's going to be a little confusing. Let me just go to a stock. There's less, less noise on there if you like. Okay. So let's just look at Massey. I'm in Massey right now. Okay. The first thing I do is I go back. I look, I zoom out. I understand where the bullish trend is right now. Is there any major support and resistance zone? Am I going to enter now a support and resistance zone and get knocked out and flipped? Okay. So no, there's nothing up there. We're in fresh air with a nice bullish move up. We've got a wave four pullback. And when I look left, there's nothing there that's going to interrupt my entry. I look at the pullback on the 535, just between 90 and 140, tick in a box. I've got false breakout bars on the top here. Then it pulls back on the stochastic during the wave four and crosses over in the oversold zone. Tick in the box. This is all looking good. Okay, there's nothing wrong with this trade. There is nothing wrong on resistance wise that's going to stop me from getting in this trade. I, you know, I've got a little cluster here that I want to get over. So let me draw that in. So this little cluster here, I want to make sure my entry is above all of this. Okay. Uh, I look left here. We've got the way four. Um, you know, I just need a, a sensible entry. And my sensible entry was here which is above this cluster, above this little thing here, because I wouldn't have entered here, because the six foot moving average high hasn't been passed. So when I look for my entry strategy, it needs to be above the six foot moving average high, above a recent pivot here and or here, and that's my entry, okay? It's not moving and shaking, okay? It didn't take the stop out of this pullback, and then it got a higher support level, and then it went for it. Now we're looking for a higher support level and still to go for it. Okay, Norman. So it's not just that you get the signal. It's about looking left, understanding where there's any support and resistance zones to affect your entry. Because a lot of the time, Elliott wave trades, the fifth wave trades that fail are because you're entering into resistance. If you go along, for example, you need to make sure that the entry strategy is bang on. Okay, you're not entering into support or resistance. That will flip it around. Yeah. I don't know if I can find another example, but we'll, we'll see. What does Tho look like? Again, Tho is just, oops, do want to do that? Clear all drawings. So with Tho, 535 to 9140. False breakout on the top of the stochastic, pulls back against it, crosses over in the oversold zone like an elastic band it wants to get back to that overbought zone and it has okay the way four pull back in the green zone great where's my entry going to be in this case I, I wanted to be aggressive we had a really you know a nice pullback here it was steady we had a great high volume again looking at using both bits and Elliott wave here this piercing line pattern if you get with this green and this, this was high volume, okay? So this gap down a little bit, moved down and rejected, closed near the highs on high volume. So the behavior is important here. So what do I do? I want to go long, but I want to make sure I'm out the side, the six four moving average high. If I wait to get above this pivot or this pivot or this pivot, I'm going to run out of, I'm going to run out of juice. So on this instance, I decided to go aggressive outside the six four moving average high, okay? and manage it aggressively from the outset. So as soon as I got a, a, a close above this 50%, I was risk-free, and now we're going and managing the trade, okay?
perfect. So Mark, on bit syndicator, looks like micro gold is going to pop to the upside. Is that what you were seeing on the five minute chart? So let's go to micro gold for a second. It's probably too late now to Okay, five minutes. Takes a little time to load up. Okay, now this is a great example of, uh, of not it wasn't quite working out at that time. So, okay, right. Talking about this trade here. Now, there were some great trades coming up, actually, really great trades on gold. Uh, so it pulls back, it finds support, you get it, you get a long signal. It's just taken out the stop. What do you do? Walk away, Mark, okay? It has to stay in that range and it has to pop. If it pulls back too deep and takes a stop out for the order, there's something going wrong. It doesn't, it's not to say there isn't a trade there, but not on the five minute. It's not stayed within the rules. So you look at other time frames and you see if there's another trade. Okay. So I'm looking on the one minute now. Two minutes. Okay. So, okay. On the two minute. I've got potential here for a roller coaster long. Let me just bring that over. So you spotted the trade, there's some bullish um, potential, but um, it's broken the rules, okay? Now, what we have here, okay, is we've got a an entry here for the roller coaster at 1893.4. Okay. It's not been popped yet, or it may have just triggered there, but it's not taken the stop out. So, what you're going to do is you're going to go risk to reward, stop. I'm going to go entry above this pivot. We did that today on 16 and a massive winner. Uh, so, that's going to be a 93.7. So, although it's given me a signal, I don't want to be going in just before this pivot zone here. I want to make sure it gets through. So 18.93.7. So my risk reward is 1 to 0 0.5 to this target zone here. It's 1 to 0 0.75 to the high of the day. It's not a great risk to reward. Okay. I personally wouldn't do it. Uh, I don't like trade this late in the day anyway. So, um, but if you are going to do that, usually, if on a roller coaster we hit this 50%, it starts to print the trailing stop, so you'd be risk free. So that that remember when you're using the roller coaster strategy, uh, you are potentially <clears throat> when you do work on that risk reward, usually 80% of the time, once the price action reaches that 50% line it starts to print a trading stop. Now, it doesn't use that line to print the trading stop, okay? It uses a combination of, of three EMAs and an algorithm and all that sort of stuff. But I, an observation I have made is that when it reaches that 50%, uh, usually we're printing or starting to print those trading stops, okay? Um, so that, I hope that helps. So yes, you saw the signal, there's bullish potential. There's another signal on the 15 minutes, okay? The longer term. I mean, look at that on the 15 minute. That looks good. Why does that look good? Because we rejected the lows here. Our entry is a little lower here. But, you know, if I get in this and it actually on that two minute and it goes through 95.2, through that 50% I've already drawn on, I'm pretty confident this is going to go because the 15 minute bits is triggered. Okay. And we could go on. Okay, that's pretty getting pretty close to trigger. Who's taking it? Go on, who's taking it? <laughs> Again, use your bits to understand what's happening with the volume here. Okay. So right now we're coming up towards the entry, but it is still low volume. We did get a a high volume green candle here on the five minute. Uh, where are we? We're only two minutes into this candle. It's going pretty well. 
I bring the one minute over. The current candle we're on right now um, is gray, but we've had a green one there. We've got a couple of consecutive gray, green candles, higher volume on each minute. There we go, popping up there. Okay. Uh, you know, looks pretty good. All I would say is because of the risk reward, you've got to be risk free. I mean, today and this week, Anything over five ticks, I'm risk-free. I'm locking in one tick to cover costs. Sometimes it comes back and takes you out, but then when you get a runner, you're 30, 40 ticks in profit, and it's a good, it's a good trade. Um, so, you know, that's what I would say on there. Okay, any more questions, guys? Come on. I've got a few more minutes before I go and have my dinner. Okay, looks like there is no more questions, so I am going to sign off in a second. Wishing you all a happy summer, and um, in a circle, guys, see you Monday. The rest of you guys, I'll see you on the other side, okay, whenever that is. Um, thank you, Federico. Thank you all. Thank you, Edith. Cheers, everybody. Have a great weekend. Maybe Barcelona in August. All oh, right, okay. Back home. Cheers, Matt. Have a good weekend. Yay, back home. Well, when things have settled down and cases have come down, maybe you come down to, uh, and to the Costa del Sol, or maybe we travel up to Barcelona or something. I don't know. But uh, we will get together, hopefully, by the end of the year when things have calmed down a bit. <laughs> okay, guys, enjoy your weekend. Speak to you all uh, soon.